As Psi-22 has made it through the core first-year curriculum, as well as subsequently persevering through the abuse that was APSC-200, there lies a final challenger in their path to the achievement of the Iron Ring, APSC-221. Despite it being the final course mandated by the department, it is thankfully one of the easiest. In light of this, this video will suffice as an overview of key concepts as a replacement to attending the lectures, because truthfully, it's unlikely that you are going to go to them anyways. The first part of the course reviews elementary definitions that are crucial for its constituent units. For starters, fixed costs. These are expenses that have to be paid by a company independent of any specific business activities. Such real world examples of these are monthly rent and yearly tuition costs, despite the method of course delivery, unfortunately. Variable costs. These are costs that increase or decrease in proportion to production output or other independent variables. For example, your weekly alcohol expenditure as a function of whether or not it's midterm season. Incremental costs. These are costs that tend to increase over time or in proportion to a firm's output. The amount of Adderall you'll be purchasing every semester throughout your undergrad as your tolerance for it proportionally increases over time is a prime example of this. Sunk costs. These refer to money that has already been spent in the past and which cannot be retrieved. The result of these expenditures have no value to a firm in the present time. To be clear, that is zero worth, much like the first year textbooks you bought but never opened. Cost estimation is the use of accounting records and research data to estimate the price of a given venture. Its principles can be applied to estimate how much you'll spend at stage rage, but it should be noted that it can be highly inaccurate as your sober brain always neglects how many shots you're willing to buy for other people. Now that we've established a concrete understanding of these topics, we can move on to more substantial ones. The equivalent annual cost, or EAC, is the annual cost of owning, operating, and maintaining an asset over its entire service life. I won't make a joke, but anyone who's taken the course can agree that we just want to get this unit over with. Inflation is the quantitative measure of a rate at which the average price of goods in an economy increases over a period of time. Thus, it indicates a decrease in purchasing power of a nation's currency. It's the realization that the money that you have now will evidently be worth less in the future, despite no change in its nominal value. Ergo, if a savings account provides you a 1% yield, you're effectively losing money to inflation. That being said, you aren't losing as much money as if you were to place it with another overly leveraged institution. <clears throat> I'll just leave that there. Depreciation is an accounting method of allocating the cost of an asset over its life expectancy to represent how much of its value has been used up over time. It was personally one of the easiest units to grasp, considering that I don't actually know what appreciation feels like. <sighs> yeah. Taxes. This unit reviews various accounting practices and techniques that organizations employ to save money on their bottom line. From the capital tax factor to the capital savings factor, to the CCA rate and half-life rule. It's really just taught to set up the expectation that taxes are overly complicated and never get easier to understand as you age. Just ask your parents the next time they're crying while filing their T4s. Lastly, there's the unit of risk, uncertainty, and recognizing opportunities. While there isn't a formal definition, it is essentially the process of weighing the likelihood of events in a given situation to best assess and decide your actions accordingly. For instance, the decision to stay in bed and skip your morning classes yields a certain probability of failing the course, whilst attending said morning lectures completely exhausted yields an equally unfavorable probability, indicating that both options are comparably equal and your best one is to simply not go to class. Another exemplification would be that realizing that by solely watching this video, you possess a higher likelihood of failing 221 than by actually studying the material. Although, by throwing up a disclaimer saying that I'm not liable for any student's failure in the course, it negates any unwanted outcomes, therefore eliciting a zero-sum game in where you inevitably fail the course, and give this video a like.